What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the PS5 career mode, this is episode number 57. I start today's episode off with Southampton away in the FA Cup round of 16, coming on the back of our 3-0 win against Leeds in the Premier League in the last game in the last episode. Travelling to St Mary's, as you know, last season we reached this round before being knocked out by Arsenal, because the season before that, we were the winners. This season, I want to get at least back to the final, but starting off this game, despite picking a really strong lineup, Southampton away is always a tough place to go. We fell behind to Ralph Hassan at side very early on and trailed at the break by a goal to nil. I couldn't create that many chances. Southampton were defending really well. As we know, they hold onto the ball really well too. With 70 minutes to go, looking for a rescuer, someone to stand up and find our equalising goal. But he's running one to play one to a Charlie. He spots Grady D and Ghana, and the former baggy finds just a little opening to bang it in from the tight angle and find the far corner with the weaker right foot. D and Ghana with the goal. He's come good in some big games this season, including here as well, rescuing us and sending us in to extra time. So one one and in extra time it was really tense really tight really nervy as you'd expect and both teams had a golden chance each to win it and not see a penalty shootout occur first Andy Rinomoto the captain firing wide after a great free ball by Charles and then in the final seconds of the game Lyndon Dykes our former striker one on one with former Saint Paolo Gazzaniga and the Argentine pulls off the relics with virtually the final touch of the ball makes the save and forces a shootout drama on the south coast as we head to penalties to see who goes through to the next round and to start the shootout off Lyndon Dykes chips Paolo Gazaniga from 12 yards before Kelman levels it to make it 1-1 Fafana also goes for the chip but hits the bar from this one then Andy Rinomata has Pierce penalty saved as it's 1-1 after four spot kicks Jao Pedro then scores hitting the post as it's 2-1 the Saints restored lead and then Chris Winnock hits the woodwork and after small bone dinks it down the middle Southampton going to an almost unassailable free one lead, meaning we're on the brink of exit and surely heading home. Chris Metham, always reliable, must score, otherwise we're out. And he does. Terrible range, but managed to score and at least give us a chance of forcing sudden death. But we still need to save one with Gaza and then score the fifth one as well. Xerxy against the Argentine. Paolo hadn't make a save yet. And then he does, wouldn't you just know it, when the pressure's on, he comes up big, makes the save, and gives Charles Ball the chance to force sudden death. But if he misses, we are out of the FA Cup in the last 16. And was it ever in doubt? Come on, sends the keeper the wrong way and forces sudden death. We come back from the brink, and as O'Connor is then denied by Gaza, two saves in a row, how the turn tables, how the tables turn. A chance for us to make it through. He scored in normal time. He forced extra time. Grady D and Ghana, he's come good in big games this season in his first year for us. And he scores the winning penalty to send us through to the FA Cup quarterfinal as well. What an incredible turnaround on the shootout. We are on the brink of heading home and being dumped out in the last 16 for a second straight year. We had to save one. Uh, sorry, we had to score one, save one, and score one. We need to get it right on three consecutive attempts. Otherwise, we will be dumped out. You could say the Saints bottled it, but I think we were just holding our nerve better. So we make it through on the shootouts, then coming from behind to force our way through. And as you can see, we head into the last state of the FA Cup where big teams were knocked out there as Manchester United were falling at this round. We find out our opponents for the FA Cup quarterfinal. First time there since season three when, of course, we won it. And we've got in the last day of the FA Cup. Watford, the Hornets at home. When you look at the teams that are remaining... Really, it's only us and Arsenal that are the big teams left in. Brighton versus Sheffield Wednesday, Arsenal versus Crystal Palace, and West Brom versus Stevenage are the other ties in the competition. I must say as well, this year, and this is FIFA, I'm noticing a lot in FA Cups, at least FA Cups for sure, um, the lower league clubs... They seem to go on really good cup runs, and there's often, or quite often, I should say, giant killings as well. So, yeah, we're into the last eight. Certainly fancy our chance there at the Hornets of getting back to Wembley for the first time since season three. Still for the second game of today's episode on the weekend, now returning to matters in the Premier League and coming back home to take on Leicester City, who, as we know, are struggling big time this season down the bottom of the table. First goal scored in the game by Jonathan David. This was hilarious, though. Almost headed the ball off the line with a Brett Gize. Don't ask me what I was trying to do there. I wasn't being cocky or arrogant. I genuinely don't know what I was trying to do, but I'm very grateful the ball did cross the line. It actually kind of reminded me of, um, do you remember many, many years ago now for Portugal? I think it was against Spain. 
when Cristiano Ronaldo scored what would have been, what would have been, probably his greatest goal of his career, when he did that little bit of a skill move and then Rabona sort of chipped to the far post and then Nani headed it in. And it was, I believe, actually, funnily enough, incorrectly ruled out for offside. I think Nani actually was onside. It was so many years ago now, I can't remember for sure, but I think it was against Spain. And uh, the goal was disallowed. I would have been livid had Eze been in an offside position there and prevented us from going a goal allowed. Thankfully, the goal scored as he didn't touch it after the ball, uh, before the ball across the line. So 1-0 QPR. Uh, we then went 2-0 up to Mori scoring his first for the club from a corner as he headed the ball in to score his first in an R shirt. Uh, Jeremy Evobise got his first, uh, sorry, second goal of the season even, uh, making it 3-0. We rarely see Jeremy get, uh, get minutes, but he scored there to make it 3-0. And as the game was coming to its close, leading by three, the points are in the bag. We were in control from first whistle to last. Charles Ball gets another goal as he continues his underdog pursuit in the race for the golden boot. Brilliant ball by Reese James. That absolutely inch perfect trajectory and timing of the run by Charles. Takes one touch, dinks it over the goalkeeper and completes the route. Final score QPR for Leicester City nil and a big win there at the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium. One of those games where I just feel like I could win this game by any amount. And of course Leicester, they're sick of us now. I mean we beat them 6-1 at the King Power. In the two games we faced them, the total score would be 10-1 QPR. Yeah, the Foxes are fed up of playing the R's. And for our fourth game of, sorry, third game uh, of today's episode here, uh, taking on Stade Rene in the first leg of our Europa League round of 16 cycles. This was the round we got to last year before being knocked out by Bayer Leverkusen. And I felt very confident after the tie was drawn after beating RB Leipzig in the first knockout round. But this was a really tough game. I couldn't create that many chances. And I was fuming at the final whistle as well. And you guys know me, I don't rage or anything. But this is a game where there was very few chances. I had a golden chance to win it there, and the referee flew for full time as soon as I released a free ball to play Charlie Kelman, the top scorer in Europe, through one on one. And I was like, I mean, I see it from both sides. Like, the referee's well within his rights to blow for full time because the allocated additional minutes has been uh, been played. But it's like, are you really going to blow up there as soon as Charlie's going to run through one-on-one? -on -one? I was fuming at that stage. I was very, very angry, but then I made a cup of tea and I was fine. But um, either way, no one in the final score. We head back to France with a tie still in the balance, but if we do score an away goal in France, then we'll be in the driving seat, no doubt about it. So... For the fourth of five games uh, in today's episode, we take on Watford here in the FA Cup quarterfinal. Again, fancying our chances of making it through to the semi finals and the final four of the competition. Once again, did pick a really strong lineup though, taking no chances. And early on into the game, oh, it's the year of the ball, baby. His assists this season have been amazing, but he's also scored some brilliant goals as well. That is probably my favourite goal Bull has scored throughout the course of the series so far. That was absolutely glorious from Charles there. Brilliant piece of skill and a great half volley into the back of the net as well. So 1-0 QPR. Watford would level right before the break, though. I talked about him before. Ismail Assar. I can't believe he's still playing for the Hornets. Makes it 1-1 and levels things to the visitors. But right before the break, tied at 1-1. Firm favourites heading to the game. We would get ourselves back in front. And this is one of those moments where I was like, do you know what? I hate to keep on using this saying, but I'm going to use it in the commentary when I record it. Luck will balance itself out. Didn't get the luck there against Stad Rene with the referee blowing for full time in deep into stoppage time. Deep into stoppage time in the first start. He could have blown for full time. Instead, nope, I'm going to let play continue and we capitalise off it. Jonathan David puts us back in front. 2-1 right before the break. And in stoppage time in the other half as well, in the second half, David bags his brace and ensures we are making it through to the final four of the FA Cup. Gets his second goal of the game. Gives us a two-goal cushion. And that is that. We are into the final four. I love the fact of Ben Foster, the cycling GK. Come on, the boys. Celebrating as former club there running all the way up the touchline to celebrate the boys there in the corner as we are through to the FA Cup semi-final and into the final four for the first time since season three when of course we went on to win the competition so three on the final score and as you take a look at the fixtures as well well just like in season three I'm going to ask this question are we the baddies? Because Arsenal were knocked out by Crystal Palace, the only other traditional top six left in the competition. So we have got in the final four of the FA Cup. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Crystal Palace at Wembley, Roy Hodgson's side, West Brom versus Brighton is the other semi-final tie. The bag is right now the only team outside of the Premier League still remaining in the competition. Uh, so Crystal Palace, they did knock out Arsenal in the last round, so we'll keep that in mind. But I do feel very confident indeed we are the firm favourites to win it, just like we were back in Season 3, that we can recapture the trophy we lost in Season 4. And again, we've got a fantastic record in this competition, man. We really have. Final in Season 2. 
winners in season three, and now back to the semi-finals in season five as well. And it's kind of uh, funny as well because normally I don't take this competition very seriously in my career modes, but in this series, I'm taking it very seriously indeed. I like going far in it. So for our fifth and final game of today's episode, Europa League, round of 16, second leg away in France against Star Rene, again, struggling the first leg. And in this game here, Freddy will be able to bail us out early as the French side almost took an early lead. But 12 minutes after the restart, still tied at 0-0. Once again, they defended really well, just like in West London. We, walk, uh, we got one golden chance, and it fell to the right man. The top scorer in Europe, not just for us, but in the whole competition, Charlie Kelman gets goal number eight in the Europa League and fires us in to the lead, get the away goal, and after that happened there, it seemed as though the tie was basically over. Because Starren didn't score in the first leg, they need to score two. We've got a rock-solid defence. I couldn't see them breaching it more than once. And with six minutes to go, Charlie Kelman bags his brace. He is so goddamn good, Kelman. That's why he got a contract extension on transfer deadline day. We love him. We love him. He's not had as many minutes as Jonathan Davies. He's still had a lot more than last season. He's our top scorer in Europe, and he shows why he's always getting a nod in these Europa League knockout ties. Two to the final score. The American bags both goals. We are through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League and go one stage further than we did last season. Delighted with that, but again, we've got Charlie to thank. That was a very tough tie, that one. Very tough indeed, but we have made it through. But that was this episode of the PS5 Karimo, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode featuring a draw for the last day of the Europa League. Both legs of the quarterfinal in that tie as well. And also some big games in the Premier League as we try and pull away the top tower. Nine games to go as we've now gone five points clear of Liverpool, but it's still only one clear of Manchester City. Have a great day. Much love to you all, and I will see you for another massive episode of the PS5 Career Mode very soon.